thank you so much again for joining me on this channel as always i'm very grateful for all your previous views likes and subscriptions thanks for joining me yet again underground and hopefully uh, you should be able to hear me with greater clarity we had some technical issues with the microphone uh by technical issues i mean incompetence uh but uh hopefully uh thanks to youtube and some uh very useful videos hopefully it's been cracked um but uh, i'm just really excited about this one today as i normally am uh we're going to be looking at uh sikhism and the guru granth sahib and the first thing you just need to know uh and no knowledge is ever wasted is that granth uh, is the only word in the English language that rhymes with month. So if ever you're in uh, some kind of trivia night somewhere, uh, hopefully that will hold you in good stead. Many religions uh, have a holy book, books or sacred writings that they look to for inspiration, for guidance, for worship and so on. Sikhism is called the Guru Granth Sahib and um, it was started by Guru Nanak. Uh, if you remember from one of our previous videos that we did together, uh, he is the first uh, guru and the founder of Sikhism. And uh, his great friend was Madana, and uh, he was a Muslim. They would do lots of, uh, sort of songs and things together on their travels. Um, and Guru Nanak wrote some of these hymns down. Uh, it was the fifth guru, Arjun Dev, who actually started collating them and putting them together in some kind of uh, booklet form. And then the final human guru, uh, Guru Gobind Singh, took the writings of his father, the ninth guru, added them, and that's the completion of the Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, and effectively, with Guru Gobind Singh passing away uh, just after 1700, that meant that the Guru Granth Sahib is effectively the 11th and final guru. Um, what's even more amazing is not only this uh, beautiful uh, place of worship, the Gurdwara, uh, the Golden Temple, which is in uh, Amritsar, west of India, in um, and uh, holds the Guru Granth Sahib, the actual original copy. Uh, it's believed that the Sikh faith is the only religion in the world that has its original copy of its holy text, which really is quite extraordinary. Uh, not uncommon, of course, uh, it was uh, any copies that were made were handwritten. And it was about the 1850s uh, that printed copies were made. And one of the fascinating aspects of the Guru Granth Sahib is that all copies are identical. There's exactly the same number of pages, exactly the same number of hymns. And uh, so in other words, uh, if you're a Sikh in India and uh, opening up the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, for worship and uh, looking at a particular page it'll be the same page for a Sikh in Australia same uh, page for a Sikh in the United States uh, UK etc and so on I think that's really worth reflecting upon what are the advantages of making all copies the same uh, for me I think something that, that really strikes me is this uh, idea of universality this idea that um, uh, literally everyone is from the same page. I know that's a very corny thing to say, but it really is quite something. You get this consistency of tradition. Uh, and I think that's a, a really important idea. And considering that um, Sikh population uh, to begin with were persecuted and there's been migration and it's something of a diaspora as they've moved around the world. Um, I think that idea, that lineage uh, is quite an important one. Um, I think there's something else as well that I just wanted to highlight. Uh, is uh, the music of the Guru Granth Sahib. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. I promise that is something I will never do on this channel. Um, but uh, the idea is that uh, the book is ordered musically and to ragas, which are sequences of musical notes, is designed okay, uh, to be sung to uh, or to have musical accompaniment. That's the point of the Guru Granth Sahib. And I guess that... Uh, that sort of sing-song tradition, the idea of the oral storytelling, that's something which uh, is quite a common idea uh, in religions. And we think about perhaps uh, the gospel worship in Christianity, okay? Uh, it's a very powerful and unifying force. And if you consider that in the Gurdwara, uh, Sikh place of worship, you can imagine perhaps everyone sitting down, uh, there's the Guru Granth Sahib, and uh, the musicians are playing, and th that's a very unifying experience as well. And that has reminded me I actually need to do uh, a video on the Gurdwara. Uh, I'll make sure I do one in due course. But just have a, a, a play around with those those ideas in your own research about 
uh, the power of music in worship. Uh, and I think that's something which uh, is, is really hugely important. And you don't always see it when you uh, have you know a holy book in front of you uh, you may not necessarily realize that it's there to be sung to the, the best thing on that i can think of is perhaps if you're maybe in school or in your class or at home and you're reading a play uh somewhere like shakespeare or brecht or whoever it may be it doesn't really come alive until you see it acted out and perhaps that's how i think about the guru grant sahib until you perhaps uh, hear it um uh, and, and with that musical accompaniment that it really begins to enrich people's lives. And there's a beautiful uh, sort of saying from the Guru Granth Sahib, of all sounds, the best is to hear of the presence of God. And I think that's really something. Of all sounds, the best is to hear of the presence of God. Uh, and uh, I'd just like to leave that one with you. It's a wonderful little quote. Um, but I think something else which is very exciting about the Guru Granth Sahib is how um, it also includes teachings from other religions, from the Hindu uh, and the Islamic faiths. Um, I think, why include writings from other faiths? What can we learn from this? What does that tell us uh, about Sikhism? Well, I think it shows its inclusivity. Uh, I think it shows how uh, it clearly uh, if it sees some ideas from other faiths that seem to match its ideals and its aspirations, and that's absolutely fine. Um, remember, Sikhism is a monotheistic faith, a belief in one God. Uh, and I think that um, the fact that it's willing to uh, embrace and think about uh, other teachings from other religions uh, shows something quite radical. Uh, I mean, certainly... Uh, I've been thinking about this and so certainly the Romans in their empire had a not quite the same idea but when the Romans would conquer another country they would uh, absorb uh, that region's gods or goddesses into their culture uh, and sort of make them Roman citizens. Now it's not quite the same okay uh, we're still talking about one god in Sikhism but the idea of taking on board other ideas from other faiths and using that to help shape um, your own understanding through the lens of Sikhism is something I find really fascinating. So um, thank you, as always, for viewing. Uh, I am very, very grateful. Uh, please, if you're able to, uh, subscribe and like. But most importantly, enjoy your learning.